Okay, we're continuing with our series on setting up simple web servers, and we've been looking at using BusyBox and its built-in HTTPD. And we're going to continue looking at that, and we're going to actually work on uh, permissions kind of on this uh, little tutorial here with config files. We're going to uh, create a config file that has the information for our server, including uh, allow and denies and username and passwords. So uh, let's go ahead and the server here, this Raspberry Pi that I'm logged into, I have set up a folder called www in my home directory of Pi. Uh, and we've been starting it up by saying busybox httpd, saying use busybox and it's built-in tool httpd. And we're gonna say dash p and we're gonna give it a port, whatever port you want as long as that user has permission for that port, I'm gonna go 8080. We're gonna say f and v for uh, force it to go into the foreground and uh, give it lots of information using verbose mode. And then uh, we want to tell it dash H for whatever is going to be the root directory uh, of our web server, which in this case is home pi www. We'll hit enter there. Our server is started. Let's bring up our web browser here. The IP address for my server has changed since last time I have started recording these tutorials because I didn't set up a static IP for it, but uh, I'm just going to navigate to its IP address, tell it colon 8080 because it's we're running on port 8080, and we don't have an index file if you've been following these tutorials, but we did create a file called my.html. I'll hit enter, and there it is. It says hello world. You can see in our shell here that we have a uh, response of 200, which means it's delivered up the file all right. Okay, so that's our basic example there. So let's uh, come down here and control C to kill that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start creating a config file. I'll say vim, I'll call it my.config or conf. This is, uh, can be called whatever you want because we're going to tell it in our command to look at that. So we'll create that. And we're going to create uh, a line here. The first line will say h colon, and that's going to be whatever the root directory of our server is, which as we just stated was home pi www. So this will say, you know, no matter where we're starting, if we're looking at this config file, this will be the home directory that we're working in. And as you create a config file, you can comment out lines using a pound symbol, the number symbol, if you would like to comment something out instead of having to delete the line. So we'll save that. And we'll run our last command, but instead of telling our home directory, what we're going to do is we're going to say C, and we're going to say the name of our config file. We'll hit enter here, and we will bring up our web browser again. And if I hit F5 now, you see it served it up no problem. It is working the same. So this way you can use a config file without having to give the home directory a big whoopee. It's not a big deal. Uh, things you want to think about, though, at this point, if we kill our server here, is you may want to give the full path of your config file. That way, no matter where you are when you're starting it, it will find it okay. Because it found out, I put the name of the file because it's in the folder I'm in, but doing it like so, you can be in any folder on the system and it will use that config file again. If I F5 up here, it refreshed real quick. Hello world, you can see that it was served up and uh, which computer was requesting that. So you also know who's accessing your server. Let's add to our config file here. We will vim my config and we'll add a line. We'll add two lines actually, A and D. Uh, a will be allow and D will be deny. So with D, we can say, okay, I don't want, actually before we have this allow, we're going to say 192.168.1.150. One fifty. That was the. That's my computer that I'm working on now that I'm connecting to that server with. So we're saying deny that IP address. So that computer from that IP address will not be allowed to connect to this server. Alternatively, you can also say a asterisk symbol that says deny access to everybody. Don't let anybody connect to this server. Well, what good is that? Well, that's why we have this allow. So now you can give a list of IP addresses that you do want to allow. So if you only want certain computers to be able to access this web server, you can use this 
allow. Now, remember, you know, in a lot of cases, people can fake IP addresses, but here's a case um, that we're going to use. We're going to say 192, or sorry, 127.0.0.1, and that's itself. That's local host. Uh, if you're not familiar with servers and, and, and how they uh, dish out IP addresses, one point, uh, sorry, 127.0.0.1 is set aside for yourself. That's how you loop back to yourself. Lots of times you might type into a browser localhost to get that. And that's only if your computer's set up to redirect localhost to that. And that's your loop back device. Um, in fact, if I save that, if I type in ifconfig to look at my, my uh, network settings, you see that you have this loop back device right here, LO. And that's your local loop back. And you can see right here, it's 127.0.0.1. And that's like a, basically a virtual network device. Uh, so you're looping back to yourself without having to use your Wi-Fi or your Ethernet. So even if you don't have those connected, you can still loop back to yourself. So going back to our config file, we're saying don't let anybody in unless it's this IP address. So what this is saying is only allow the server to connect to itself. And this, again, as I mentioned briefly in a previous tutorial, commonly used with a lot of application nowadays. Um, and it just allows you to run these web-based applications locally without having to access any network or external server you're connecting to yourself. So if I was to save this as like that, and I was to run my command again using that config file, and I was to come into here and I try refreshing this, it's going to say, give me an error of 403 forbidden. And you can also see that down here. So you can have a, a list of, <clears throat> excuse me, of um, computers that are trying to access that are denied. So you can see if someone's constantly trying to connect. Now, so the server's up and running, but I'm denying everybody, so I can't connect there. Just to show you uh, that it is working. I'm going to open up another window here. So down here, this shell is also running on the same Raspberry Pi and I can use my wget command which should be on your system already and I am going to say uh, localhost and I'm going to say port 8080 and the name of the file I want to look at is my HTML and we're going to say Q for quiet and dash capital O dash so it's just going to output that file and as you can see it did retrieve it because I am connecting from the server to itself now if you have a problem doing this with localhost which in some cases you might you might have to put in the IP address of 127.0.0.1 and I'll hit enter and you can see we it served up okay now again this server that we're running on we know the IP address is 192.168.1.121. And if we hit enter now, ah, we didn't get it. Even though we're connecting from that server to itself, just as we did in these two commands, it's actually not using that loopback device. It's actually using, in this case, my Ethernet port. And it's going out and coming back in. And it's going, whoa, whoa. We don't want this. So this is good using this, uh, the local host or the loopback device should help prevent, I'm pretty sure about this, <laughs> any packet sniffing. Because even if you were to say, oh, hey, allow this IP address, it's actually going out to the network and coming back in. So anybody on your network could be sniffing that information. Using the loopback device, the only computer that can sniff that information is the server itself. So... Uh, much more secure doing that way and again it, it helps prevent people from you know booting you off the network and changing the IP address or something along those lines uh, theoretically possible so uh, that is denying service to all IPs except for the loopback device let's take it a step further and uh, allow other people to connect but require usernames and passwords. So I'm going to control C here to kill that out, clear the screen. And again, I'm going to go into my config file and I'm going to comment out these lines because I want to be able to connect from the computer on that right now to display this. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say 
forward slash colon and we'll create a username I'll say Bob colon and we'll give it a password we'll say my pass what this is saying is root directory user and password so now if I save this run our server using that config file and now try to refresh this you can see it asks for a username and password and I will say what did I say Bob and I said my pass enter and there we go it's brought up the um, hello world because I typed in the proper username and password and it saves it so if I refresh it's still doing that so actually let's go back into our config file here real quick and change the password to my pass to save that start up our server again now if I refresh it asks again because the username and password is wrong so I want to do something here just to demonstrate something I'm gonna say Bob and I'm gonna type in blah 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 I'm just typing a bunch of stuff it's not the correct password I'm gonna say login and you can see it gave a response of 401 um, it's it's you weren't able to access it we didn't get 200 and you can see again it asks for the username and password now keep in mind if you're not using security keys as I'm not here this is being transmitted in plain text which again since I'm going across the network in this case anybody on my network sniffing traffic can very easily get this username and password in which case if I was using the loopback which again would only work on the server itself uh, that would not be the case as far as I know um, because it's using the virtual loopback device rather than your Ethernet port. Um, so keep that in mind that even though you're using passwords here, everything is unencrypted, um, and so everybody can see it. Now, uh, speaking of which, another th issue here is that our password is in plain text inside our config file, and that's not good, because if someone gets hold of that file, now they know your password. So what we want to do is we want to use hash to hash out our password, uh, and we can do this, and then if someone was to get access to the config file, they could still use that hash to access the server, but they still don't know your password, so if you were to happen to use the same password on other machines, they won't be able to access those other machines. Uh, you know, let's say you use the same password for your Google account. They, uh, if they did get this hash, whether they got it through packet sniffing or got it getting a hold of the config file, they'll be able to access this server, but they won't necessarily be able to access um, your other stuff because they still don't know your password. And even then, we're still using hashes. So, and so, yeah. Anyway, let me get on to demonstrating that. So we have to generate a hash first. So let's go ahead, kill our server here, and the HTTP in BusyBox has a built-in function for doing this. So we're going to say BusyBox HTTPD dash M, and then we're going to in quotations give our password. So here we'll say again, we'll say my pass and we'll say my pass three to give it a new password we'll hit enter and right there we have our hash so now we get to go into our config file vim my config and over here instead of the password you put the hash and then we save it run our server again using that config file and hopefully, if we hit F5, we'll ask for the password again. We'll say Bob, and we'll say my pass three. Enter, and we logged in. So much better to do that way, and it, it takes one extra step. It's built into HTTPD. You just have to generate it and replace it in the config file so that your passwords aren't sitting there in plain text. So uh, also, last thing I want to go over in today's tutorial, killing our server here, clearing the screen going up here let's clear the screen again uh, going into our config file again we're saying slasher that's the root directory you don't have to password everything if you want to password a certain directory you can do so so in this case I can say slash um, we'll call a folder private so I'll do that and I'll make a directory called private and inside that directory I'll say private index.html and I'll just say this is 
my private stuff. Oops. Now if we run our server again using that config file, I come up here and I hit F5, you notice it served it up, response 200, gave me my hello world up here without asking for a username and password. If I was to try to go into my private directory though and hit enter, private index.html. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> I know the problem. I created the uh, folder inside the wrong folder. Let's go ahead and uh, make this uh, full screen here. Clear this out. I created it in my home directory. Let's move my private directory onto our server uh, directory, which is www. So I, I just created that in the wrong directory. And uh, we can now run our server, BusyBox HTTP, you know, using that config file. So again, the, the problem was the private folder wasn't on our web server I created in the wrong directory. But now that it's there, I can again hit F5 here, and there is my private stuff. Um, of course, it didn't ask for the username and password because I've already entered it. So let's go ahead and do a better example <laughs> where it actually asks for the username and password. We're going to say um, my config, and I'm just going to do a plain text password here just to move this along. I'm going to say my pass4. Save that, run our server, and again, if I go here to uh, my.html, I can view that. But if I try to go into the private folder, it asks for username and password, and I'll say Bob my pass four, and there I can see this is my private stuff. So things to remember: make sure you actually put the files you're trying to access inside your web server directory. Um, <laughs> that's obviously very important. Um, so that's it. I hope that you learned something today. Again, BusyBox is on many, many systems out there. I kind of said a couple weeks ago that it's on pretty much every system, and that's not true. That Well, it's still on most systems, especially, again, lightweight systems, routers, phones, uh, other small devices. And if you have one that has HTTPD installed on it, uh, compiled into it, you're all set for having a pretty full web server that can do a lot of things. Again, remember that it's running as the user that's starting it up unless you tell it otherwise. Uh, so it has the permissions of that user. So if you start it as root, your web server is now running as root and any of the script files it runs run as root. Remember that unless you're using security keys, uh, everything's unencrypted. So even though you're using usernames and passwords. If you're using something other than your loopback device, anybody can sniff that traffic and get a hold of that information as well as everything that's being transmitted. So I thank you as always for watching. I ask that you visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com 
forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.